Hello, and welcome to CalcBlog's tutorial on using the basic graphing features on the TI-83 Plus and TI-84 Plus. First, we begin on our home screen and press the Y equals button. This takes us to the equation entry screen where we can enter expressions we want to graph. For example, let's enter x squared into y1. To view the graph, press Graph. We see the parabola y equals x squared appear on the coordinate axes. If we wanted to graph multiple functions at a time, we could go back to the y equals screen, so let's do that. Let's enter sine of x into y2, which we can reach by pressing the down button. Going back to the graph screen, we can see that our new function is also graphed alongside the old function. However, it's fairly hard at the current zoom level to see the graphs. So let's check out the zoom menu and see if we can get a better picture. One easy function to use is zoom fit. We can reach this by scrolling down and then pressing 0 to select zoom fit. The equations are regraphed, and we see that while the graph of x squared looks a lot nicer, we can hardly see the graph of the sine wave at all. The zoom fit feature can work very well sometimes, but it can't always read your mind. We want to get a closer look at our sine wave, so let's go back and try out a different zoom function. The zoom trig function, reached by pressing 7, shows us a really nice picture. we can see the two periods of our sine wave and the tick marks that correspond to integral portions of the graph. Now let's check out the trace feature. We reach this by pressing the trace button and it allows us by pressing left and right to see the exact values of the function on our graph. First though, let's press down and switch from x squared to the sine wave, which is indicated in the upper left corner. You'll notice that the points the trace function chooses might not appear nice, but press right six times and we'll see that it displays a value at point 785, which is pi over 4. So each left or right tick is pi over 24 in this mode. Go over another 6, and we have the value at pi over 2. The window menu shows us our current zoom settings, and you'll notice that the xcl, x scale, is pi over 2, which determines how far apart our tick marks are on the x-axis. We can input values here for the various boundaries in our window, but it's usually easier to remember that we can also get these parameters by selecting various functions in the zoom menu. In other words, the window is just a numerical interface for this. Let's go back to the zoom menu again and choose zfrac110, zoom fraction 110. This gives us a nice way to use the trace function with the graph of x squared. Note that on older calculators such as the TI-83+, this zoom level might not be available. It's one of the few features added in the TI-84+, which reflects some of its simple symbolic fraction capabilities. Now let's take a quick look at the format menu. This is reached by pressing second to zoom, and it lets us control a wide variety of aspects on how the graph is formatted. RectGC and PolarGC let us choose how coordinates are displayed when using the trace function. Coord on and coord off toggle whether or not coordinates are displayed when using the trace function. It's usually best to leave this one on. Grid off and grid on set whether or not you want a basic grid overlay displayed on your graph. This function can add a lot of clutter, but might also help you make more sense of your picture. Let's set this to on. Axes on and axes off toggle the coordinate axes and label off and label on give you the option to display labels on these axes or not. Finally, expert on and expert off set whether or not you want the equation to be displayed on top of the graph when you're using the trace function. You'll notice that when we go back to the graph, the grid is now displayed. Finally, let's take a look at the calc menu, which can be reached by pressing second trace. This menu provides a variety of handy tools for doing calculations from your graphs. Value tells you the value of the currently selected function at the specific point. You can select the current function by pressing up and down while in trace mode. Zero lets you find zeros of the function within an, in an interval you specify. Minimum finds the minimum value of a function within a range, 
and maximum likewise finds the max value on an interval. Intersect finds the intersection between two curves, which can be a very handy feature. Finally, dy over dx calculates the derivative of the currently selected function at a point, and the integral of f dx calculates the area between a curve and the x-axis over an interval. Let's take a look at the intersect feature. Since we only have two curves, we can press enter twice to select both of them. Then select a guess. This is important because functions may have multiple intersections and sine of x and x squared do. Clearly they both intersect at x equals zero because they're both zero then. So let's look at the other intersection. The calculator tells us that this intersection occurs at an x coordinate of about 0.877 and the value of the functions at this point is about 0.769. There are many more advanced features of the graphing functions on your calculator, but this provides a basis for understanding how to use practically all of these. Look out for our upcoming videos on polar graphing, parametric graphing, and plotting data, and be sure to follow us at at calcblog on Twitter and on Facebook at the CalcBlog fan page. Thank you very much for listening.